Bill Ayers is my guest on Truth Out Interview, where we'll talk about the ongoing movement to privatize education, dismantle teacher unions, and the erosion of critical thought in schools. Bill recently authored a piece on Truth Out entitled, With Teacher Tenure Threatened, Trouble in Every Direction for Public Schools. Hello, Bill. Welcome to Truth Out Interviews. Good to see you, Ted. You know, when many people think of tenure in education, they think in terms of perks, you know, like, oh, wow, it's a lifetime job, or gosh, you know, you can't get fired if you have tenure. The translation being that tenured teachers are lazy, or they're poor educators, or they're harming their students. So you're an educator, and you probably have run up against this argument for years, if not decades. How do you answer people? Well, there are a couple things that come to my mind as you raise this. One is, you know, that, that the idea that tenure is lifetime uh, appointment is not true. What tenure is, is it provides you job safety uh, so that you can't be hi- fired on a whim. You can't be dismissed just because the principal doesn't like the way you dress or doesn't like the length of your hair. Before there was tenure, before there were teachers' unions, um, women were made considerably less than men in the teaching profession. Blacks were last hired, first fired, and people were dismissed all the time because of some uh, prejudice or bias that a principal had. Doing away with that was a good thing, not only for teachers, but for students as well. Because look, let's face it, good working conditions are good teaching conditions, and good teaching conditions are good learning conditions. How do we get good working conditions? We get it through having teachers at the table with administrators working out a contract that gives people a sense of security, that they're not going to be fired for their political beliefs, they're not going to be fired for their attitudes uh, uh, toward toward, um, uh, the administration or anything like that. That's a good thing. The other thing that, that you raise that comes to my mind immediately is every politician for the last decade has railed against the lazy, incompetent teacher. So they get to a microphone, they say, we need to get the lazy, incompetent teacher out of the classroom. When they say that, I feel myself nodding because what am I going to say? The lazy, incompetent teacher should stay there for my granddaughter? That's ridiculous. They win the argument by framing the argument. I want to frame the argument that every kid in a public school classroom deserves a caring, competent, morally committed, intellectually grounded, well-rested, well-paid teacher in the classroom. Once I put that out there, I think I win the argument. So what do we want? What do we want in schools? We want good teachers who have good working conditions, a sense of safety and security, a sense of of developing a culture of of good teaching, really concerned about the kids not looking over their shoulder to see if they're satisfying um, the arbitrary demands of anyone. And the arbitrary demands of anyone, be it a principal or other kind of administrator, you were talking before we recorded this interview, is that tenure is about due process. That's all it's about. Tenure means that I've negotiated a contract in which I have the right to be uh, to go through a due process um, uh, procedure if before I, I, I get booted. I don't just get booted one day because somebody doesn't like me. And that gives a teacher a sense in this very complicated work, this very strenuous work, very difficult, mind-wrecking, soul-trying work. It gives you an opportunity to uh, focus on the kids and focus on your teaching. And I'll tell you, one of the things that I do, Ted, all the time when I when I uh, get involved in these issues is I always ask, well, what do the most privileged people have for their kids? And it turns out the school that Arne Duncan, the Secretary of Education, attended for 12 years, that his kids went to, that the President of the United States' kids went to in Chicago, the University of Chicago Lab School, that Mayor Daley's kids and Mayor Emanuel's kids went to, at that school, teachers have tenure. So if it's good enough for those uh, kids, those very privileged kids, why is it not good enough for kids on the West Side or kids in Pittsburgh or Los Angeles? Those teachers not only have tenure, but they've developed an attitude in the school where they really work together around a, a fundamental question, which is what is good teaching? They ask that question of each other. They ask it in, in grade level groups. They ask it of parents. But they are developing a culture of good teaching. And in that school, teachers only get evaluated in years one, two, three, six and then never again. Now that's an amazing thing at that very privileged school. And I asked them, why don't you get evaluated after grade, after year six of your employment? And they said, because at that point, unless something triggers a, uh, a problem, we assume you're part of the culture of good teaching. We want you here. And we want you here for a career, for a lifetime. 
that's a different attitude than the attitude of discipline and punish the teachers. And it's something that you had written in your article too. You you paraphrased John Dewey, and I'll just quote you from the article. It said John Dewey did a century ago that in, said in a century ago that in a democracy. Whatever the wisest and most privileged parents want for their children must serve as a minimum standard for what we as a community want for all our children. You know, these are pretty powerful words. Yes, and he, he went on to say anything less than that is unlovely and destroys democracy. And I think that's a fact. We can't have a system in which the privileged kids, and I'm talking now about, for example, Mayor Rahm Emanuel in Chicago. His kids go to a school that has five libraries. His kids go to a school with a robust arts and music program. His go kids go to a school where sports are, are, are an essential part of every kid's education. Then why is it that we're closing 50 schools last year, firing 4,000 teachers in the last two years, and, uh, and creating charter schools where they don't have libraries, they don't have arts, they have a, an obsession with test prep. And that's, if, if, if Rahm Emanuel's kids do not go to that kind of school, why does he insist that the rest of our kids have to go there? When I think about privatization, the word hegemony comes to mind. And that's where you know, sort of an elite class foists their point of view, or at least manipulates everyone else into thinking like them, saying that, you know, we should get rid of failing schools. We should fire lousy teachers. We should do these things. And on the face of it, like you said, if it's framed in that way, how can you disagree? No one wants to see a failing school. No one wants to see bad teachers there. But there is another agenda. It is about dismantling teacher unions, about dismantling tenure, and eroding critical thought within the education system by promoting testing as the metric and as the end-all and be-all of success within education. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. I think if you look at the corporate reform agenda, which is an agenda embraced, not only pushed by Bill Gates and Michael Bloomberg and a, a merry group of billionaires, but embraced by Bush and Christie and, and Obama and Clinton right down the line. I mean, if you look at that agenda, it has three parts. One is it reduces education to a test score, something that none of these people would do for their own kids or allow for their own kids. My kid is not a test score. Your kid, on the other hand, who the hell knows? I mean, I can write him off by his statistical profile. Second thing that it does is that it gets rid of, it abolishes any collective voice of the teacher and and kind of substitutes the idea of a career in teaching with these kind of three-year wonders. So we'll bring young kids in who have, uh, you know, energy, and they'll teach for three years, and then they'll go on and get their law degree or whatever they're going to do next. But it, it, it destroys the idea of teaching as a lifelong career. What we're doing is we're, say and we're saying basically that teaching isn't something that should draw you for a lifetime. And in my experience, you can't learn to teach in three years. You can learn to teach in five years, and then you have to keep at it and becoming a better and better teacher. My middle son is 10 years in a middle school math science classroom, and he says, I'm not a great teacher. Every, every day I try to be a better teacher. And to me, that's the nature of teaching. But the third, going back to my, my litany, the third aspect of the corporate reform agenda is the destruction of the public space. And thinking of education as job training, preparation for life, and a product, an individual product that you buy and sell at the marketplace, rather than thinking of education either as a human right or as a, a, a lifelong pursuit. You know, uh, I live in California and there was a recent ruling in the Superior Court about tenure laws and uh, that they deprive students a right to an education. And I remember when this news story came out, I work in the, uh, the news business, as it were, and most of the reporters were breathlessly reporting like, this is the death of tenure, this is the death of tenure. Like, this is really gonna change everything. And of course, it's gotta wind its way through the, the court system because they're going to appeal, and then it'll eventually go to the state Supreme Court who will have the ultimate say at this point. But, but you, this, this figures prominently in, in your article, this, this recent decision. Maybe you could talk a little bit about that. Well, the decision, you know, the, the, the problem with this decision that just came down in California, um, in Los Angeles, is that it, it has all the markings of a fraudulent kind of, kind of uh, decision because they're acting as if it, it, they, they couch the thing in the, ter in, the, in the language of the civil rights movement. In fact, the corporate reformers all say this is the new civil rights frontier. 
And I guess in some ways we should be flattered that they have to kind of use the rhetoric of social justice and progress and progressive history to kind of mask what they're doing. But if, if it's a civil rights issue, denying poor kids uh, and these particular kids uh, a good education because of tenure, why can't we then go back into court and say, you're denying these kids a decent education because, you're not a, because of class size, or you're denying these kids a decent education because you're not accounting for the fact that they come to school poor and that they need, they need certain um, um, aspects of an education that you're not providing. But it seems to me, I don't want to go down that road too far, because it seems to me that we cannot look to the courts as the remedy for what is going on in education. Public education is being dismantled. And frankly, the public schools as they are in most communities are, are not something that I think we can support wholeheartedly. I want to defend the public space. At the same time, I want to be critical of the status quo. So I think our only hope, and I see glimmers of this in Chicago and Detroit and Philadelphia, I think our only hope is to build a social movement where teachers and parents and kids together, and citizens, good, good-hearted citizens together, demand, as we demanded in the South during the Freedom Schools, demand a kind of education that allows us to transform ourselves uh, in order to um, participate in a transformative society. And that, I think, is our only hope. I don't think we can look to the courts and say, oh, they'll save us. They will not save us. Our job is to demand what we know we deserve, which is education as a human right, education for all, equitable, fair, um, robust, um, richly resourced education, just like the privileged get. Well, Bill, I want to thank you for being on the program. I appreciate it, Ted. Thanks so much. Bill Ayers is a Distinguished Emeritus Professor of Education and Senior University Scholar at the University of Illinois at Chicago. In addition to that, he's the founder of both the Small Schools Workshop and the Center for Youth and Society. And you can read his current article on Truth Out. It's called, With Teacher Tenure Threatened, Trouble in Every Direction for Public Education. Thanks for watching Truth Out Interviews. I'm Ted Astrogadu. We'll see you next time.